Hello, wonderful first graders. This is Miss Donahue. I'm going to go over day 26 of your packet. This is a reminder that office hours are from 9.15 to 10.15 in the morning, and then again at 1.15 to 2.15 in the afternoon. So if you have any questions after watching this video, please use your teacher's office hours to help, um, them help you answer your questions. All right, so this is what it looks like in the packet. It's going to be day 26. Again, do not worry about this date right here, just worry about the day. All right, so for math, we are going to start a new unit, which is money. In this unit, we are going to learn how to identify pennies, nickels, dimes, and quarters. We are also going to learn how to show the value of each coin in pennies. So for example, this is a nickel. So a nickel is worth five cents. So that equals five pennies. So this is kind of just an example of um, how we are going to identify a coin and then also how many pennies equal that coin. Here's this a little fun, catchy song. Um, that will help you with your process of identifying and learning the coins. So I'm just going to do a, a quick read of it. Um, <clears throat> penny, penny, easily spent, copper, brown, and worth one cent. Nickel, nickel, thick and fat, you're worth five cents. I know that. Dime, dime, little and thin, I remember you're worth ten. Quarter, quarter, big and bold, you're worth 25, I'm told. So if you want to maybe write this down and then practice singing it, singing it throughout the day, to help you remember each of these coins that we're going to learn. So in the, um, the first, so in that um, packet, there is an optional video that um, goes over the coins. And then if you do watch this video, see if you can write down some things, at least three things in your math journal about what you learned um, about coins. All right, so all of your activities for math today are going to be in your math journal. The first activity here, you're going to draw and label pictures of a penny, nickel, dime, and quarter in your math journal or on any piece of paper. You are to color each coin and then write the value of a penny, nickel, dime, and quarter, um, quarter beneath each coin. So what I have here is kind of an example of what you could put in on your paper or in your journal. And so um, I made this into a tree map to help me. So I've got my title, which is identifying coins, and then I've got um, each coin laid out. So this is the, um, the name of the coin, so penny, and then I have my picture. I have the front of the um, penny, and then I also have the back of the penny. And then below that, I have how much um, a penny is worth, so one cent. So just like we um, dollar signs, this is a cent sign. So it's like a C, the line down the middle. So then I have a nickel, front and back, and that's worth five cents. I have a dime, front and back, and that's worth 10 cents. And then I have a quarter, front and back, and that's worth 25 cents. So you can make your um, sheet on your paper look like this and create a tree map. You can do whatever you would like. This is just a great way to organize our thinking, um, but this is what the activity is asking you to do. So um, try your best with the drawings. Um, and make sure that you do use color. All right, so after you have completed the first activity, the second activity says, what is the value of a nickel in pennies? So we know that a nickel is um, worth five cents. So in your journal, it wants you to write this sentence right here. A nickel is equal to the value of blank pennies. How do you know? Explain in your math journal or on paper. So this is the first time that we've ever done an activity like this and since this is our first day with money. So I have an example of what you could have put inside of your um, journal as well. 
A nickel is equal to the value of five pennies. I know because a nickel is worth five cents and a penny is worth one cent. And then I have here an example of um, a drawing that you could even do inside of your notebook. So I've got the front and back of a nickel, the equal sign, and then I've got five pennies here, showing how I know that a nickel is equal to the value of five pennies. So I kind of already did this activity for you, but it's just, an, um, since this is the first time that we're doing this, you guys can take this, what I um, have here, and put it into your notebook so that you can look back at it um, later on because you're, you are going to do the same activity um, every day, but with different points. All right, so now moving on to reading. Here is the optional video um, for this day. And it will also be linked in to um, the YouTube video. So you're first going to listen to the article, What's Best? The Debate About Pale Male's Nest. And that's on page 13. So after you've listened to the article again, you're going to think and, think and talk about the opinion of the people who live in the apartment building and why they think the nest should be taken down. So this day, we are um, now looking closely um, at the opinion of the people in the building um, and thinking about why they think the nest should be taken down. So after you've thought about it and you've talked about it with um, someone at your house, then I, we want you to write about it. So you're going to write the information you would include in each part of a paragraph about the opinion of those living in the apartment building. So this is what um, the paper, the note catcher looks like um, in your packet. And this is very similar to what you did yesterday on day 25, except for now we're looking at the other opinion. So yesterday you guys um, used the note catcher and filled in the opinion um, of the bird watchers. Today we're going to fill in the opinion of the people living in the apartment building. So your um, day 24 sheet where you listed the reasons for why the nest should be taken down um, using the art article, you need to use this again because this is going to help you fill in your um, note catcher. So I have here, um, our, sentence start, our sentences and our sentence starters to help us with this note catcher. So an introduction is going to be the start of our paragraph and this introduces the topic or what we'll be writing about. So for this one, we're writing about um, the opinion of people living in the apartment. So this is what you would say. People have different opinions about what to do with pale males' nests. So that's getting our reader um, thinking about what this is going to be about. Now, after you've written the introduction, then you're going to write the opinion statement. And this tells the reader your, um, in this case, the opinion from the article um, and what they think. So your sentence starter here would be, the people who live in the building think, and you're gonna fill in, well, what do the what is the opinion of the people who live in the apartment building? So you're gonna fill this in here using this sentence starter. Once you've written the opinion, then you have to tell the reason. And this tells the reader why this, you have the opinion or this group has the opinion um, based on the information from the text. And that's where you're going to use your day 24's charts. That's why I said it's very important that you have this near you. This is your sentence starter that you're going to use here. They think this because. So you're going to take, um, you're going to take um, one or two of these reasons here and you're going to plop them into this sentence, this sentence right here. So you're giving the reason as why people who live in the building think the nest should be taken down. So you're gonna list, you're gonna write um, out the reasons here using this sentence starter to help you. 
And you already did the work, guys. You already went into the text to find the reasons. You have it written right here, so please use this to help you. So once you've written down the reason, then you're going to wrap up your writing with the conclusion. And the conclusion for this opinion piece is the nest sh must be taken down. So a conclusion is just telling the opinion again. And the people who live in the apartment building, they think the nest should be taken down. So please use um, the sentences to help you with the introduction and the conclusion, and also the sentence starters here for the opinion and the reason. Again, please use your day 24 note sheet to help you with the reasons. If you have any questions about this, your teachers are more than happy to do, um, to do this with you during their office hours or just to help you go through it. All right, so for word work, we have our optional video here that will be linked in. Once you have watched the video, you are going to do this activity. It's called red and blue words. It says, write the words from the cycle 21 word list. Use a red crayon or marker to trace the vowels. Use a blue crayon or marker to trace the consonants. See the word list on page 18. So this is the first day and the first activity for your cycle 21 words. And this activity is a little different because it wants you to, you can trace, underline, um, highlight, but it has to be in red, the vowels. So I have an example here for you. Um, the word is heat. So E and A are red because they are vowels. Vowels are letters such as a, E, I, O, U. Each vowel has more than one sound and can be silent with no sound at all. So in heat, we only hear the E, but the A is also there with it, but it is silent. But E and A are the vowels in the word, so we are going, to, they are going to be read. Now, a consonant. So in this word, H and T are the consonants. Consonants are any letters of the alphabet that are not vowels. So it is every other single um, letter in the alphabet that are not these right here. Those are going to be your consonants that you are going to um, color with blue. So th again, this is an example of what, these are the vowels, and then every other letter are going to be the consonants. So this is your word work for day 26. Again, you're using your new words in cycle 21. And this video right here does a fabulous job teaching you the new skill for cycle 21. All right, so for social studies this um, today, the topic is going to be again, um, talking about producers and consumers. So producers are people who earn money by making goods or providing services. Consumers are people who buy goods and services. So your activity today is to create a four section comic strip. And a comic strip is a sequence um, of drawings that tell a story. So for this comic strip, you're going to be telling the story of a producer making a good or providing a service and then selling it to a consumer. So I have an example here for you. Um, my producer is a farmer and um, he is pro um, producing or he is planting um, vegetables in his garden out in the farm. Then he brings it to the market where he is going to sell his vet fruits and vegetables. Here we have the consumer that comes to the fresh market and buys what the producer has um, made, which is the fruits and vegetables. Then we have here at the end the consumer eating the fruits and vegetables that were bought from the fresh market. So, Again, a comic strip is a sequence of drawings. 
So as you can tell, I don't have any words here, but my drawings do go in order. Um, this is just an example you can come up with of your own. Um, so again, producers are people who earn money by making goods or services. So my producer here was the farmer. And then consumers are people who buy services and goods. And here my consumer is this woman right here and she's buying the fruits and vegetables that the farmer made from his garden, I'm sorry, from his farm. And then the little girl here is eating what her mom for her. So she's also a consumer. All right, and then you're gonna end the day with a special area activity. Remember to take brain breaks between each section so that you are, um, your brain and your, is um, refreshed and ready to go on to the next activity. Please don't forget that once you have finished everything, to take a picture and send it to your teacher so that they can give you feedback. Again, if you, need any, if you have any questions regarding any of these activities, please use your teacher's office hours. Um, they are happy to help you. All right, guys, have a great day completing day 26.